I guess more than anything, it tells us that climate action in line with 1.5 is still achievable. And it brings opportunities to enhance people's livelihoods, provide jobs, provide access to cheap, clean energy, and to ensure the security of energy supply. No, the science says it is absolutely possible to, to limit warming to 1.5, but our current trajectory will not be sufficient to get us there. We need to be clear, this collective um, failure of us all to act as the scale of, of and speed necessary to combat the climate um, crisis is, is irresponsible at this moment and immoral. Vulnerable countries like small island states are already experiencing um, storms that wipes out an entire year's worth of GDP at, at, the, at even at 1.1 of warming. 1.5 will be no panacea. It is no walk in the park for us, but beyond that, climate change becomes an exit, existential threat to our communities. We need to see more from, from these emitters, particularly our friends in G20. Some definitely are. Others make less sense because of our geographic and scale or geographic circumstances. It's important to highlight that many small Thank island you. states, the, through, their, through their nationally determined um, con contributions, NDCs, are already taking steps to mitigate climate change. We as islands are, all have a role to play and will continue to do our part. We have been working hard in that direction, but it's no secret. We face barriers which are only exacerbated by the climate crisis, finance, technology, and transfer of technology, capacity building. These are barriers that we face and have been speaking about. These will, will need to be scaled up. We're not talking about um, competing aims of, 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 cli of climate action and the development. It's cheaper to get people onto a solar mini grid than it is for us to build a new coal plant or gas powered sta um, station. And, and that opportunity needs to be seized upon. Scale and accessibility. Scale of finance is not sufficient for mitigation or adaptation. This is a, a massive gap and must be bridged quickly with both traditional and innovative financing mechanisms. On access, there needs to be more targeted allocation of finance for small islands. And there needs to be acknowledgement of both and our re reduced capabilities and capacities. When a hurricane hits, we need to be able to start rebuilding within days, not months. And as we see in some cases, not years. It, we need to be able to do that immediately. People's lives are at stake or put on hold. The nature of this finance is also an issue for us. Climate change and um, COVID-19 combined to, to create for, for small islands 
de a debt crisis for many, many, many of us. And developing states are suffering because of the um, clash between the financial crisis created by COVID and that of climate change. Our capacity to borrow is shot, it's constrained. And we need to see increased grant funding and the concessional loans for small island states. We, you know, the funny thing is we have been saying this, it has now become crisis and we ought to stop saying it and, and act on it as a global community. We cannot continue to shout. We got to treat this crisis as we do a humanitarian crisis that is physically before us brought on by mankind. And we got to treat this crisis in the same way because that too is brought on by mankind. These barriers will, will slow down our mitigation efforts. Let's be clear on that. There's no doubt about that. But, um, you know, renewable, renewables offer a lot of, of, of potential for small islands. Um, fuel imp imports cost us our, um, a significant amount to our economy. Uh, and, and so there is savings to be made if we move into renewables. But let's not forget that emissions from small islands are not the, the significant, are not, so, are not significant at all. You know, and that's not to be the focus. And to those, but it's really about the major emitters to helping small islands address the issue. This is a very important one and one that has been, uh, it, 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 was, it was very helpful to get it on the table in Scotland. Developed countries need to acknowledge that loss and damage is real and requires support that is separate to what is offered and provided towards adaptation and mitigation. The, I, the IPCC report um, clearly states that loss and damage are happening now and that they will continue to happen and mitigation and, and, um, and, and despite, you know, would have been mitigation and adaptation. Loss and damage is, is, is a real occurrence and something that we have to address. Loss and damage isn't some far off issue. It is already occurring. Every disaster, developed countries need to acknowledge this and that this is not an issue that will go away. It will only get worse as warming increases. Loss and damage will get worse, I repeat. I come from an, 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 a small island myself, and I know and have witnessed some of what we're talking about now. SIDS are being threatened by sea level rise, with some communities already being relocated due to the, the encroachment of the oceans. And, I, and this, is, this is real as well. I, in my own communities in Antigua and Barbuda, I know this. This also endangers our, our, our fresh water. And again, and the resources that some islands have is very little fresh water. And with this encroachment, we are, we are seeing the, the loss of, of, of fresh water we are seeing the damage of agriculture, our coral reefs and, and, and all the mangroves, um, uh, the whole ecosystem, this, that, this which, which is there and that protects our coastlines and these are all being eaten away. Our um, tropical cyclone seasons are, are getting more and more intense damaging the, the, the infrastructure from in, in the country, in the islands, forcing people to relocate, forcing people to rebuild, having significant um, sort of mental health stress on, 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 on families. And this is becoming a 
a crisis that, you know, it's, you might call it, it's the secret crisis, because although we're talking about it, it's not in people's face where people are, are dropping dead every day, but it is the secret crisis that is slowly, slowly eating away at the, the soul and the livelihoods of, of countries. Uh, one hurricane or cyclone wants to repeat it because it's fearsome, it's frightening, and, it, and, and it's something that we all ought to be able to stand up and say, we have to find a way to stop this because so many members of our global community are in danger. And we talk of island states, but this is, this is far reaching. So we are two years into the decade of climate action and ambition. This, um, this COP must deliver for us and focus on accelerating momentum. We started last year. AOSIS reiterates our call for developed countries to come to the table and, 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 and come to COP27 with a clear mandate, a clear standalone plan on how they will deliver on the, the commitments made <clears throat> sorry, to at, at least double adaptation finance by 2025 and enhance that. These issues of, of scale and balance must be bridged with both tra um, traditional and innovative financial instruments and um, arrangements, including the ones that create sort, sort of fiscal space for SIDS, such as the, the debt for climate swap and, um, and, and the issuance of, of of bonds on the reallocation of special drawing rights. For us, these are, these are very important. AOSIS is also of the mind and the view that we, we, um, we are a way, way behind when we need to be, where we need to be in achieving financial goals of, um, as, as was outlined, outlined in Paris. We are therefore also looking forward to um, progressing the, the discussion on, um, let's say on decarbonizing finance flows at this upcoming COP. All three um, of, of the Route 6 re reports from um, the IPC came, it, it makes it clear to us that we are not doing enough and are not moving um, uh, uh, towards, we are really moving too slow to get on a, a 1.5 pathway. The longer the delay, the worse the loss and damage impacts in SIDS. As I repeat, the longer the delay, the worse the loss and damage impact on SIDS. Many of us are already at our breaking point. This is, this is, a disaster. This is a, a disaster brought on by climate change impacts. And I don't know how much more we need to emphasize that. Um, you know, proper, properly addressing this and financing loss and damage must therefore also be a, 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 a prominent discussion in COP27 so that we can, we can have, a, again, a clear way to go. And we know more, we have no more time to waste accepting in, um, this kind of um, ex the excuses we have been hearing and accepting new excuses will not help us as small islands. We must leave COP27 with clear pathways. So I think you could call COP27 the clear, the, 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 the clear line cop, the cop that we hope will design the lines that will take us closer to the objectives that we are seeking in finance, in the reduction of emission, in, achieve, in, 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 in beginning to implement 
the objectives laid out in Paris. This COP must deliver on those things.